September 4, 1971. Alaska Airlines Flight 1866 is a regularly scheduled passenger flight, operated by Alaska Airlines from Anchorage to Seattle, with several intermediate stops in southeast Alaska. The aircraft is a Boeing 727 with U.S. Registry N2969G, which was manufactured in 1966 and has accumulated 11,344 flight hours. The captain of the flight is Richard Adams, age 41. Adams has 13,870 flight hours to his name, including 2,688 hours on the Boeing 727. First Officer Leonard Beach, age 32, is piloting the aircraft at the time. Beach has 5,000 flight hours under his belt, with 2,100 of them on the Boeing 727. James Carson, age 30, is the second officer and has 2,850 flight hours, including about 2,600 hours on the Boeing 727. Beach and Carson were both hired by Alaska Airlines in 1966, and Adams has been with the airline since 1955. The flight departs Anchorage at 9.13 and lands at Cordova at 9.42. The plane departs Cordova at 10.34 after a delay, part of which was attributable to difficulty in securing a cargo compartment door. It then lands at Yakutat at 11.07. While on the ground, Flight 1866 receives an air traffic control clearance to the Juneau Airport via jet route to the Pleasant Intersection direct to Juneau to maintain 9,000 feet or below until 15 miles southeast of Yakutat on course, then to climb to and maintain flight level 230. The flight departs Yakutat at 1135, with 104 passengers and 7 crew members on board. 11 minutes later, the crew contacts Anchorage Air Traffic Control and reports they are at flight level 230, 65 miles east of Yakutat. The controller issues a clearance to descend at pilot's discretion to cross the Pleasant intersection at 10,000 feet, and gives them a clearance limit of the Howard intersection. At 11.54, the controller instructs the crew to stop their descent at 12,000 feet and changes the clearance limit to Pleasant intersection where they could expect to hold. Alaska 66, maintain 12000, over. Roger 66, uh, maintain 12. 66 level at 12. Alaska 66, Roger. I've got an airplane that's not following his clearance. I've got to find out where he is. The controller was referring to N799Y, a Piper Apache which has departed Juno at 1144, destination Whitehorse. The Piper's altitude is unknown and there is some confusion as to the route it is supposed to be flying. On two separate occasions, Flight 1866 acts as communications relay between the controller and N799Y. Uh, Sixty-six, Sixty-six, second, copy him. Did you copy him? Roger. He says he's on a blue 79 in the clear at 7,500. He was giving you his position in relation to Colin Island, he said. I understood him to say he was in the vicinity of Sisters Island. Over. No, he said he's climbing in a blue 79 through 7,500, climbing to 10 in the clear. At 11.58, the crew reports they are at the Pleasant intersection, entering the holding pattern, whereupon the controller re-clears the flight to Howard intersection via the Juno localizer. Center, Alaska 66, Pleasant intersection uh, entering the holding pattern at 12,000. Alaska 66, Roger. You're clear to the Howard intersection. Proceed inbound on the localizer. Over. Are you on top at 12? Negative. We're um, on instruments uh, at 12. 
He then asks them to confirm they are still level at 12,000 feet and asks if they are on top of the clouds at that altitude. The crew replies they are level at 12,000, but in the clouds and on instruments. At 12 o'clock, the controller repeats the flight's clearance to hold at Howard intersection and issues an expected approach time of 12.10. At 12.01, the Boeing's crew reports they are at Howard, holding 12,000 feet. The aircraft continues to be in the holding pattern at this time. At 12.07, the controller asks for their current location in the holding pattern and direction from Howard. The crew reports they are turning on the inbound leg of the hold, joining the localizer course inbound towards Howard. Did you just complete your turn inbound? That's affirmative. You're cleared for a straight-in LDA approach uh, across Howard at our below 9,000 inbound. Uh, Roger, cleared for straight in, LDA approach, uh, across Howard, uh, at or below 9,000 inbound. We're inbound now, leaving 12,000. After getting this information, the controller clears flight 1866 for a straight and localizer directional aid, or LDA approach, to cross Howard at or below 9,000 feet inbound. The captain acknowledges the clearance and reports leaving 12,000 feet. The LDA approach consists of a localizer providing horizontal guidance to the crew. Vertical guidance is provided by instructions on the approach chart. The procedure involves descending to various published altitudes upon crossing specific intersections between the localizer and a nearby VOR station. In addition, the localizer is not equipped with distance measuring equipment. At 12.08 the captain reports. 66 leaving 5005. 4,500. Uh, 66, contact the tower now. Contact with the tower is established shortly thereafter. Tower, Alaska 66, Barlow inbound. No further communication is heard from the flight. At approximately 12.15, the aircraft strikes the eastern slope of a canyon in the Chilcot range of the Tongass National Forest at the 2,500-foot level, 18.5 miles west of Juneau. The aircraft explodes on impact. According to the cockpit voice recorder, CVR, and flight data recorder, FDR, there was not even a last-second awareness among the crew that a collision with the terrain was imminent. It is worth noting that this is the first aircraft crash in the United States, in which more than 100 people died at a time. The CVR and FDR were read out, and the US NTSB started an investigation. First, it was determined that there were no apparent issues with the crew's qualifications or the aircraft, so their investigation focused on the navigational equipment and techniques used for the approach. Both navigation radio receivers on the aircraft were found to be in good working order, as were all ground-based navigation stations. From the CVR recording, it was determined that the crew did not use the audio identification features of the navigation radios. Further, 
they did not use all available navigational aids to help determine their position, though it's noted that it wasn't specifically required. Based on the crew's conversation and the flight's erroneous position report over the Barlow intersection, the NTSB noted that the information at several points along the approach path provided by the captain's navigation radio was consistently false. But no reason for the false indications could be determined. The small aircraft that entered the airspace during their descent might have been a distraction for both the controller and the pilots. The NTSB determined that the probable cause of this accident was a display of misleading navigational information concerning the flight's progress along the localizer course, which resulted in a premature descent below obstacle clearance altitude. The origin or nature of the misleading navigational information could not be determined. Honeywell Incorporated's engineer Charles Donald Bateman flew a Beechcraft Baron on the day of the disaster. After learning about the incident, he changed his route and was soon at the crash site. The sight of the wreckage made such an impression on Bateman that he became obsessed with the idea of making flights safer. Less than three years later, on June 19, 1974, the first patent application for ground proximity warning systems was filed. Since December 1974, this system was installed on all airliners. According to the NTSB report, it is clear the pilots are considered the main culprits, although this is not stated directly. But it's worth considering that the Juno airport itself is quite difficult in terms of landing. 180 degrees turns, including over the straits and between the mountains, should be performed during the approach. By following this approach, the crew could become confused. Coupled with incorrect navigation data on the display, this could lead to the pilots incorrectly determining their location. Therefore, the airline itself stated the failure of the radio beacon as the main cause of the disaster. In addition, a month later, the Federal Aviation Administration installed an additional radio beacon in the Juno Airport approach area, which made it easier for pilots to determine their location. As for Alaska Airlines itself, in 1986 it became the first airline that pioneered the use head-up displays, or HUD, on civil aircraft. Alaska Airlines installed the first versions of HUD on 24 Boeing 727 aircraft in 1986. Up until 1995, they made 225 landings and 35 takeoffs that couldn't have been accomplished without the HUD. <laughs>